Hey, good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Praise the holy name of the Lord. Welcome, 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 everyone. Uh, you're tuned in to Trinity Timidity or Timidity. You know what Timidity means. So, my dear brothers and sisters, most welcome. Uh, and please try to bring your iPad, you know, just a pen or notebook. Just you're going to jot down everything. Uh, the only place you find good news is here now. Please. Uh, I know there's a lot of disturbances going on, uh, and you know we need to re we need to really pray for all our dear brothers and sisters yeah. in the United States. Yes, Lord. they are really in the path yes. of uh, hurricane. Yes, uh, it's so devastating, my dear brothers and sisters. There's many nations, uh, yes. many people are already killed in Haiti and other places. Yes, Lord. so please remember them in your prayers. You know, the only good news today you mm -hmm. will hear is from this beautiful network yes. and your tuning yeah. to our program. I'll let my sister Abina to pray for all of us so that, you know, we all may really be well protected and come under the safety net yes. in the holy name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Abina. you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. You're yes. worthy. You're worthy of all the praises, yes. my Lord Jesus. The praises belongs to you. Yes, you are the Holy One. You are a living God. Thank you, Father. Whenever you, we yes. call upon your name, you answer us. You are there in the midst of us, Master. Thank you, dear God. We honor you and we bless you, Father, for all the blessing. Thank you for the life you've given us. Life is so precious, Master. Every mm -hmm. second of our life belongs to you. Without you, there is nothing in this world, Master. Thank you, we need you, Master, every second of our Father. Thank you. All the glory, all the honor, all the praise goes to you alone, Father God. Thank, Thank you. you. We pray Thank for you, all Lord. our brothers and sisters. Father, who's going through right now, Master? Everywhere oh, there is disaster, problem, problem, disaster, yes. calamities, all the natural disasters happening right now, Father. Thank you, in Lord, Florida, please, in Haiti, pray. in all those places, Master. We, beg you, we bring Father, them all to you, Father. Yes, please reach and touch them, Father. Be with every one of them, Master. They need you right now, Father yes, God. Father we God. pray for all of them at this moment. Pray for all our brothers and sisters who are watching us, Master, wherever, whenever, whatever they are praying right now, Father. Reach yes. and touch them, Master. Answer them. Wipe their tears. They are praying for the family. They are praying for the, for the baby. Father, we pray for all of them. We bring them to you, Master. Answer everyone. Every sickness, Every sickness, Father, God, every sickness, Father we rebuke every in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, every addiction, we every problem, every you, financial problem. Father, we yes. come against everything in Jesus' name. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Our Father, I offer this day one, once again in your loving hand. Father, we need your anointing. Let yes. your Holy Spirit be upon every one of us and those who are watching around, Father. Let your wall of fire be around us, Master. Yes. And bless our network, our CEO and our staff. And bless my brother, he's going to speak your word, Master. Anoint him, anoint all of us. And I ask all this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, a yeah, very somber day in the United States. There are many other nations are in the crossfire already, you know, plummeting. You know, I could see uh, this hurricane is really so devastating. And, and, you know, lives are lost and properties were damaged. It'll take a long time to really recuperate with this devastations. So my dear brothers and sisters, those who are safe, those who think that we are all safe, you know, please think many times, you know, until we all need to come to the safety net. So last week, remember last week, I don't know if you recall that. And if you're not, I really want a little broad brush about last week, you know. Uh, the Lord God Almighty, you know, he really uh, sending fishers of men and he really wanted to send a shepherd so that, you know, they may feed their flocks. At the same time, you know, because, uh, you know, last segment I was talking about, you know, Habakkuk chapter 1 as well as Habakkuk chap chapter 2. In chapter 1, you know, it says that, you know, people were like fish, not the dry fish. 
So, you know, they are like fish, okay, in the sea, in the ocean. So, like uh, Solomon was challenging, like, you know, great Solomon in the Old Testament was challenging uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. He said, you know what, as a cruel net has been spread, and I know who's a cruel net, who was spread, in, spread the cruel net, you know, the Lord uh, yesterday, last week, I'm sorry. And uh, he opened my eyes, and of course, many of you would have heard. And he said, you know, you will really send people from Babylon, and they will bring chaos in the world. Is that right? The Middle Easterns are wreaking a work all around the globe. And they're literally beheading Christians around the globe. I don't know you really recall that. It's not a past thing. It is a present thing. In this world, it is happening. They're crucifying because they're Christians. Because they follow Christ. The good shepherd. So my dear brothers and sisters, what a challenge. We live in a day when we see the war is looming all around us. When we see, you know, the climate uh, changes drastically, a uh, bad omen all around us. I know these are the seasons and Christ was already prophesied 2,000 years ago. You know, please check it up in Matthew chapter 24 again, verses 1 to 14. In midst of all this, in midst of all this chaos, in midst of all this terrorism, in midst of all the evil that has been all around us, including killing of the unborn babies, the voiceless innocent babies we are destroying in the Western world. So please, you know, how barbaric it can be when the you know when recently i heard you know they even in united states of america the champion for the um, human rights here they will pull a baby from the birth canal before one hour before the birth of the baby and they can literally butcher the baby and call it a medical a medi logos they have their own words they will re really create something out of nothing and they will re literally butcher these babies and call them partial abortion so my dear brothers and sisters you know don't ever think you know we are too civilized and you know what life begets life my sister was saying every second of everyone's life was very very precious including the baby that is in the womb uh, all around the world, especially in the Western world, because that has become a commodity. It has become uh, inconvenience. They, they, you know, they think about their economy. They think about their, you know, pleasure. You know, it, it, all those things comes and plague the little baby. If that little baby is not safe, you're not safe and I am not safe. So please, you know, this year, especially, you know, we are in the cycle of the election. Try, try and vote to those people who respect life. Just not prosperity people. Everything will be taken away. But I'm telling you, when you try to murder a baby, and you know, I let Sheila read Revelation chapter 22 that one verse 15 and let's see where will be those who perpetrated this crime whoever it is it may be a great leader of this nation whoever it is whoever kills a baby you know i'm not saying that take the holy bible because that is not an antiquated book it speaks for itself it has a proven record my dear brothers and sisters i let sheila read that for you please listen where all those people were trying to drug themselves, were destroying this temple, were destroying other people, were killing, butchering. And you know, please, can we listen from Sheila? Outside are the dogs, those who practice oh, magic yes. arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves 
and practices false word. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters, you heard it again. I don't, know, I do, I don't want it to be too em, uh, empathetic or I don't want to emphasize on this, but you heard it because, you know, we try to really follow and we worship the creation everywhere, all around the world. We really, you know, try to really worship the creation, sun and the moon and the stars. Because we think about, you know, they are the ones who really help us to season. Yes, of course. But, you know, where are the creator in all this thing? Go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says the power is in the gospel. The gospel is the words of Christ. What did he say? Heaven and earth will pass away, but not his word. Matthew 24 again. Please read it for yourself. In verse 30 onwards to 37, 39, heaven and earth will pass away again. Mark chapter 13, verse 13, okay, I'm um, sorry, 13, verse 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not my promises, not one jot of this word will ever. So please, please, when you are listening to this, don't try to take it very lightly about it. So my dear brothers and sisters, it's the time for us to cringe and fear the name of this great God who is the life and the resurrection. He said, I am the life. Don't forget it. The baby in the womb is belong to him and it's him. So he says, and uh, you all claim that. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the life. You know, it has become a monotonous rhetoric. No. He is the life giver. He is the life and the resurrection. Apart from him, there is no life. So John chapter 14, put it in your margin, verse 6. And you know, how dare we try to destroy those innocent ones. And even those who are killing in the name of their God, they're terrorizing. And there end, we heard as Sheila spoke. So brother, uh, brothers and sisters, please listen. The reason why all this is happening is Uzziah for sick. People perish, lack of knowledge. Can she let ready for that? People perish, lack of knowledge. And I will tell you where, who is that knowledge? It is not a proposition. It's not a composition. It's not an imposition. That knowledge and the wisdom is a person, I will let Sheila read that later, you know, following this, and I let her read now Uzziah, chapter 4. Uzziah in the Old Testament, chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have re rejected knowledge. I also reject you as my priest because you have ignored the law of your God. Hallelujah. I will ignore your children. Yes, he will ignore you and your children. Now, why all the devastation? Why the death? The moment you throw the knowledge and the wisdom of God behind your back burner, you know, will all back up. My dear brothers and sisters, it says, everyone who tried, because he said, you are the priest. You are the priest and the royal priesthood. We're all royal priests. The followers of Christ, he called them peculiar people. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, you know, it says you are the, uh, you, uh, he calls you a peculiar priest, a peculiar people, chosen people, a royal priest. And if you throw his knowledge, and I let Sheila read Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. It's one verse, please, Colossians, and Paul write to Colossian believers. And, you know, you need to uh, listen to this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. And who is the embodiment of all the truth? Who is the embodiment of all the wisdom and the knowledge? Again, I told you, the truth is not a proposition. Truth is not a, a place or an animal or a thing or an object. My dear brothers and sisters, it, it is a person. And you're going to know the name of that person. Again, please. Sheila, can you read Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, please? In whom are all hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine 
surrounding arguments. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters, the embodiment of the truth, the embodiment of the wisdom, the embodiment of the knowledge is grounded, is the person of Jesus Christ. If that person is not in your life, if that person is not the head of your church, if that person is not the head of your family, if that person is not the head of your nations, and I'm telling you, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, what will happen is, and you need to really, you know, I have no time, and you have to really read it for yourself and turn to Revelation chapter 17. Read it from one onwards and you will find something there. One until, you know, the, there is a particular word, 16, 17. And it speaks about a woman, a prostitute, a mystery Babylon. Remember last time I was talking about Habakkuk calls, he brings the Babylonians and he's going to spread them like a wildfire around the globe and they're going to terrorize the people with violence. You are seeing it. And now John again, after 2,000 years later, we are living in that prophetical time, my dear brothers and sisters. He says in again, John, uh, Revelation, uh, John the Beloved, in their last book, please turn and, and check and write down and check it later on. Chapter 17, verses, you know, you can read it from 7 uh, until 16. And it speaks about the woman, the woman, the prostitute was drugging the nation. The prostitute who is a mystery prostitute was sitting on, uh, you know, uh, you know, she, she was a really considered as a woman, but a prostitute. And she was prostituting uh, her life, uh, committing all kind of a lewd behavior and adultery and commit all the evil in the world. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, you need to really listen to this. You know, chapter 17, and that woman is sitting down in all the nation, that prostitute, that Babylonian mystery, Babylonian, Babylonian woman, the prostitute, who's drugging the world, who's destroying the world, and you know, is destroying the folks. And that's what, you know, it says in Acts, uh, Revelation chapter 17, verses 15, 16. I let Sheila read that one word for you guys. 15, 16? Yes, 16 or 17, please. Okay. The woman who sits upon the water. Okay. Remember, okay. the people uh, destroyed lack of knowledge. You all know that. Last time I told you again. You know, in Habakkuk chapter 2, uh, verse chapter 1, verses 14, 15, it says the knowledge is the knowledge because they violently threw the knowledge of God away. Again, in chapter 2, uh, in Habakkuk, you can read that verse 14 and 15. Because the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God. Until the knowledge of God comes into your life, that is Christ, in his glory. And, you know, the earth will be in, engulfed in darkness. Therefore, I'll let you read. Uh, Revelation 17. Please, can you read that word? word? The waters you saw where the prostitute sits are the peoples, multitudes, nations, and the languages. The beast and the ten horn you saw will hate the prostitute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They Can will you bring imagine? her to ruin. Yes. That beast will ruin the nation. So, my dear brothers and sisters, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah, in the Old Testament, chapter 16, verse 16, and Jesus Christ, you know, the Father in heaven has already prophesied he will send the fishers of men and he will also send the shepherds to hunt those scattered sheep around the globe. And he will also send uh, fishers of men in Jeremiah 16, verse 16. I'll let Sheila read one verse in chapter 21 verses uh, 7 to uh, 11, you know, that particular word, you know, in 11, it says like, you know, 11 speaks like the Lord commanded his apostles, seven of them in the shore of Galilee, and they were, they were gone after, is, uh, they didn't believe. 
and you know, after his death, they didn't even believe him. They went back to their own old profession and caught nothing. And there, third time, Jesus appears to them. Jesus, the commander in chief, Jesus, the king of kings, Jesus, the Lord of lords, he stands in the shores of Galilee and he calls them, Children, did you all catch? Did you catch anything? As usual, their response is not a nothing. Because apart from Christ, you and I may have a boat and we may have a net, but it is empty. But when you hear his voice, when you do exactly what he's tell you to do, my dear brothers and sisters, I let Sheila read uh, uh, John chapter 21, verses uh, 15 or 16, please let, let, let her read. I mean, no, uh, no, go for it. John chapter 21, and he speaks about, you know, the number of the fish they caught. They were telling them it was nothing, right? And they have to drag that net. They found the boat sinking and net breaking. It was not torn yet, but you know, here they bring, they haul, every one of them in the hall, and they bring it. And now you can watch. Sheila, please read. Can you read that word? Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped around his garment. Verse 11. 11? Okay. Yes. Okay. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Right. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153 but even with so many, the net was not torn. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. You heard in the beginning, Solomon already said 3,000 years ago, the enemy will spread his cruel net around the world. And Habakkuk confirms and reiterates, and he says, yes, not only is going to drag them, he will empty the net and he will empty the ocean. And you heard the ocean represent the multitude of nations and the language and the people around the globe. Today, I, t I tell you that terrorism is in many, many nations, almost around 35 nations around the world. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you know, it's a challenge for you and me. The Lord is commanding us as a fishers of men to go and bring our families, our brothers and sisters who are dying, because if we don't go, they will be caught in the cruel net and they will be destroyed. The enemy want to depopulate them and he want to populate the hell and Christ the Redeemer, Christ who ransomed, Christ the resurrected Christ, the King of the King and the Lord of Lords, he is commanding us to really save our families. Who can save? The one who came to this world to save. His name is the anointed Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This great God, my dear brothers and sisters, he is crying out for folks around the globe to go, go around the globe, around the nations, and they're all his people. They're all scattered, I told you. As you know, like he sent the shepherds in uh, Jeremiah chapter 23, you can read it from one to five. I don't have time. So my dear brothers and sisters, you know, then finally Jesus comes as a great shepherd and you know, you have to read it for yourself in John chapter 10, verse one to 15. Please read it for yourself. And Jesus laid down his life for a sheep. And he says, my sheep will hear my voice. It's the time for you to hear his voice and rectify your life, repent. My dear brothers and sisters, these are all the messages you don't, this is not a popular message. All we want to hear is a prosperity. My dear brothers and sisters, yes, prosperity comes with, you know, responsibility. When you repent, when, you, when your life changes, when your marriage infidelity changes, my dear brothers and sisters, when you're trying to butcher the babies inside the womb, you know, the Lord is going to really bless you. You will prosper because Christ is here. He promised in John chapter 10, verse 1 to 10, in chapter, verse 10, he says, I have come that you may have life more in abundance. But the enemy comes to destroy, steal. And it's already, you know, he's emptying it. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, my time is up. Uh, I love you guys. We're gonna see you again next Friday. Uh, and you know, till then, you know, I let Sheila give you the last doxology. We're gonna say, God is sending everyone safety net coming off. Everybody need to come. Let us all come before it is too late. Sheila. My dear ones, let's all come together before it's too late. Yes. In the safety net, not in the crawl net. <laughs> so stand by us, please. Uh, the address is on the screen, and you could go to the donate button, and it'll take you to PayPal. Please send in your love offering, a donation to our ministry, go to the website, and yeah. go to the website. It's on the screen. And we love you all. We're all praying for you, and thanks for the praise report and prayer request. And uh, we, as we are miracles. proclaiming the gospel and taking to the world. Please stand by us. Uh, send in your love offerings and great miracles and a lot of praise report where you're listening. And please stand by us and we love you all. See you in next segment and God bless you all. Bye-bye. God bless you all.